This lecture is part two of Enhancing Socialization and Social Confidence. So just to remind you of the cognitive characteristics that influence literacy and academic learning and social situations, remember theory of mind is the ability to take on other people's perspective. Executive functioning is the, are the processes that control our behavior, how we um, look towards a goal and make alternative plans um, to accommodate distractions but keep that goal in mind. Central coherence is the drawing together of diverse information to construct higher level meaning and context. So we reviewed all of those, remember last lecture. Children with high-functioning autism and Asperger's have notable weaknesses in providing relevant remarks in a conversation, providing appropriate expansion comments, requesting information, um, not, not in a social instrumental way, like to get something, but requesting additional information um, that they may need from others providing essential background information. And if you think about this, um, providing relevant remarks, what does that do? I have to gather clues about what everybody else is talking about and, and really listen to what's happening and then construct and produce a response. And that takes central coherence and theory of mind, doesn't it? Providing appropriate expansion comments, that really takes theory of mind, doesn't it? I have to really think about what they're talking about and, oh, I hear you saying this and, and expand on that. Requesting information, that means I have to recognize that someone else has information that I need. And then providing essential background information, I have to recognize that, oh, when we're conversing, you may not know about my family. I better tell you about it so you can understand the story that I'm relating to you about. So all of that involves theory of mind, doesn't it? And many of it, it also involves central coherence. Children with um, Asperger's have differences in their social conversational style. Children with Asperger's, their conversational style is really marked by too much talking. <laughs> you know, children with high functioning autism tend not to talk very much at all. You're like pulling information from them um, word by word almost. Whereas children with Asperger's, it's very difficult to get them to hush. They have a comment um, related to their narrowed or restricted interest about almost everything. Many times their prosody doesn't support their communicative functions. So often you will hear either a monotone prosody or a kind of patchwork prosody where they're taking a little bit from here and a little bit from there. So they may be very excited and may not sound that way. Often children with autism have, uh, with Asperger's have a, an extremely loud volume. Um, I think part of that comes from that early motor planning kinds of issues. So they're used to attacking it hard and then they, they aren't as um, socially responsive to people saying shh or this isn't appropriate there. Remember that's kind of um, pulling clues from other places and putting it all together, that functional connectivity. Often they also have a very fast rate of speech and typically they don't group their words in semantic groupings in the same way as typically developing adults will. So I group my phrases in a way that helps you to understand things a little bit better, whereas their grouping may be just a result of running out of air. So they'll be talking all at once about something and it's just keep going and keep going and keep going, whereas I might be talking about a topic and I may pause to let you kind of catch up there and then move on. So my phrasing and my pausing is more semantically grouped. 
Children with high-functioning autism often present with monotone intonation patterns, and they have a lot of difficulty using intonational cues, um, also gathering information from others using intonational cues. The similarities that you see between high-functioning autism and Asperger's is the limited appreciation of emotional cues, um, the limitations in establishing shared attention, and that kind of social rigidity where early on you see, I have to play with the toy in the same way, do the same thing, the script needs to be the same, you need to be the same, or um, as children get older as adults, you know, they have a more difficulty kind of being flexible in social situations. They tend to want to do the same thing over and over again. So we're, when we're talking about therapy or intervention with social skills or supports, um, the difference between children with high-functioning autism and Asperger's may be that children with high-functioning autism do better with those really static visual cues, whereas children with Asperger's may appreciate explicit verbal coaching. You may want to use some visual cues as you're doing it, but you can use more verbal styles with children with Asperger's. Their similarities are they both really appreciate the use of written language and written symbols. We have very little evidence when it comes to um, big social programs going on. We're going to talk about a couple. We're going to talk about social thinking, and we're going to talk about Scott Bellini's um, method, and we're going to talk about relationship development intervention. Social programs, building social relationships, was developed by Scott Bellini. Building social relationships is a five-step model. So first, you do an overall assessment of social functioning. Um, then you distinguish between skill acquisition and performance deficits. So you're really working on deficits at this point. You then you select your intervention strategies, many of which are evidence-based. Um, they're either strategies that promote skill acquisition or strategies that enhance their overall performance. Then you implement the intervention and evaluate and monitor the progress. So a, a real familiar kind of um, teaching scenario, isn't it? In the building social relationships, they're an assessment. They use standardized assessment instruments such as the SSIS or the SSRS, um, Autism Social Skills Profile Checklist. Um, the SSIS and the SSRS are both um, pretty well standardized instruments, which I like because they have scales for families, for teachers, and even for the child to fill out. Um, and there is an, a, a complement on the SSRS, I believe, of um, teaching skills. Um, then there are the skill acquisition and performance deficits. Um, they're gathering skills where they know the skills, but they don't know how to use them. So when you're choosing strategies, um, first you're going to say, OK, what skills are we going to focus on? You look at all your assessment data. Um, what skills are we going to focus on with this child? What will make the biggest life difference? And then what strategies are a good fit for the skills that we want to focus on, right? What learning characteristics does this child bring to the table? Um, how do they learn best? Um, what evidence is available? So what does science, how does science guide us? If no research, then why am I choosing this and why is this a good fit? And then lastly, what components of social interaction skills does this strategy address? So we're really looking for goodness of fit, aren't we? We're looking for, you know, how does this child, how does this child function? What do we need to look, look for? What does science tell us? How can we fit those patterns together? Um, and, and what is the best fit for this youngster?